Hello everybody, and welcome back to the channel. My name's Nathan, and for those of you that don't know, I have two degrees directly relating with personal health and fitness, and I've lost 70 pounds in the past. So I know a thing or two about weight loss, and I'm here to help you. But we're not here to talk about that. We're here to talk about how many calories it takes for you to lose weight. Let's get into it. Now, before we go any further, I said that these are the amount of calories that you need to eat to lose weight, and I mean it. It is just for you. This number that we find out after these two parts are just for you and nobody else. The fitness industry has greatly messed up this way of thinking to lose weight to where they just tell you, oh, eat 1,200 calories a day and you'll lose weight or just eat 2,000 calories a day and you'll lose weight. But that's just not right. Everybody has a very unique set of numbers and it'll be completely different from somebody else because you are you and you are unique. But this number is called a total daily energy expenditure. But what is a total daily energy expenditure? This is the amount of calories it takes for you to be you. So it'll take account of how many calories it takes for you to sleep all day as if you didn't move and then it'll add how many calories it takes for you to move around and do the things that you do, whether that be just moving at work or going to the gym on one random day a week or even five random days a week. But how do we find this number? Let's figure it out. First, we need to go to tdeecalculator.net and I'll link that down below so you can click it and it'll be super simple and it'll be the same exact one that I'm gonna use today in the video. Now, when you open this up, it's gonna ask you a few questions. Anything from your age, your height, your weight, and your activity level. Now, it is very important that you answer these questions as truthfully as possible. Because if you don't answer them truthfully, you will get a different number, and this can either lead to too quick of a weight loss, or you might not lose weight at all. So you just have to be completely honest, and it's not like anybody else is gonna see your answers. This is just for you, and you only. So let's put in some random numbers. We're gonna put in a 25 year old male who weighs 300 pounds and is active, is semi-active. And we'll go from there. Okay, if everything has gone to plan, you should be seeing a number on your screen. And if that is the case, that's your total daily energy expenditure, which also means congratulations, you've just completed part one of finding how many calories you need to eat in order for you to lose weight. But let's not stop here and let's jump directly in to part two. Okay, but before we go into part two, let me break down the screen a little bit so you understand the numbers. If you don't care about what these numbers mean or you don't wanna learn about it, that's fine. Just skip to part two. But let's talk about the numbers real quick because it's important to know what we're doing. So your total daily energy expenditure, the amount of calories that you need to eat a day to stay at the same weight doing the same exact activity. If we look on the screen, it'll also show you what the calories are at different levels of activity, which might be important to know if you're thinking about also starting to do exercise while starting to diet because the way the numbers change means you can eat less or even more amount of calories. Okay, part two, for real this time. Now that we have our total daily energy expenditure, this is the number we're gonna play with. Now, we need to subtract this number by another number in order to get our final result of calories we need to eat in a day. But how do we find out this number to subtract it? Well, depending on your goals, we'll subtract it from anywhere to 500 to 1,000 calories a day. This will lead to one to two pounds a week weight loss. But why does that equal out that way? A little quick fact for you, one pound of fat is 3,500 calories worth of energy. So if we subtract 500 calories a day, that will give us 3,500 calories less each week, which means we had to burn fat. And then if we subtract it by 1,000, we're doubling the number, so we'll get two pounds of weight loss a week. A little cool fact but completely depending on how much weight you want to lose you'll subtract it by that number and you should be good to go congratulations after you subtract the number from your total daily energy expenditure you should have the amount of calories you need to eat a day in order to lose weight 
So congratulations, you completed part two, and now you can move forward on your weight loss journey. But before you go, let me give you a few tips, reminders, and tricks to kind of help you on your way. First thing is, as you're losing weight, let's say you lose 10 to 15 pounds, it might be good to kind of come back here and redo your total daily energy expenditure number again because your body's changing, so your calories are changing as well. So if you hit a plateau, it might be wise to come back and see if you're still eating in a calorie deficit. Two, if the calories aren't working out right, this isn't an exact science, so let's match it a little bit. You know, let's say you're subtracting 500, but you're not seeing one pound a week weight loss. Subtract it by a little more or move a little more and make sure you're being completely honest with the amount of calories that you'll say you're eating because at the end of the day, it's only hurting you. But be sure to wiggle around your calories a little bit until you find a comfortable spot for you. Also, don't view this as a diet. View it as a lifestyle change. If you want to lose weight and keep the weight off, you have to make the choices that you're making as something that you can see yourself doing for a prolonged amount of time. If you tell yourself that, oh, I'm going to do this for a month or two, and then just jump off after you reach your weight, most likely the weight's going to come back. So just be a little careful with that and be mindful of the changes you're making are going to be smart changes. And of course, if you're cutting out food to make the calories, remember you don't have to do that all the time. You can have a treat now and then. You don't need to cut out something 100% and never have it again. Because if you, like, if you like pop, you can have a pop every month or something. You don't have to not drink it all the time. And finally, please, before you make any lifelong changes or drastic changes to your diet, Talk to a professional, a doctor, a dietitian, a nutritionist, somebody that can work with you one-on-one -on -one and make sure that this is the right move for you. These are just general guidelines, and I hope that they help. So thank you for watching this video. I hope I gave you some helpful insights, some actual tools to use that you didn't have to pay for and that actually work and are backed by science. And until next time, please drink your water.